Get out now as a significant contraction in housing prices is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And housing analysts are finally starting to catch up to reality that the housing bubble is about to burst. But how deep could it go? What are the catalysts? Well, let's pick today's story up. Well, we see that the housing market is entering the most significant contraction in activity since 2006, according to a Freddie Mac economist. On Thursday, the W chief economist for Freddie Mac tweeted about what this downward shift means. The U.S. housing market is at the beginning stages of the most significant contraction since 2006. In Zandi, another housing economist doesn't foresee U.S. home prices falling nationally over the coming year, a, ch- a statement we're going to directly challenge. However, he forecasts that this housing correction will likely result in 5 to 10% price reductions significantly in overvalued housing markets like Boise and Charlotte. But as we'll soon look at, I think Zandi's going to be wrong on this. The housing prices across the country are coming down. How significant? Well, hang tight. We'll see. And let's look at the median sale price of homes and what we can see since 1960s it's just steadily increased except brief dips during recessions where prices come down when the most significant during the great financial crisis and leading into of course the pandemic we saw prices slow and then due to fiscal and monetary stimulus they surged higher what most people now say is a permanently high plateau but is that correct well when we take the median sales price of homes still in blue but now change it to a year-over-year rate of change and overlay the Wilshire 5000, the total U.S. stock market in red on a year-over-year rate of change, what you notice is that housing prices follow the equity market. So you can see stock prices on a year-over-year rate of change heading lower, and that eventually brings housing prices lower, and they become more and more in sync. Here you can see in the great financial crisis, Of course, we know the equity markets tumbled, leading then the housing market going contracting too. And now we see the equity market contracting, suggesting that home prices, not only the growth rates going to slow, they potentially are going to go negative. And the deeper the market goes, well, the deeper housing prices are going to fall. This is all a function. As you know, we talk about this in the show all the time, the wealth effect. Let's continue on with the story. Because Logan, the lead analyst of Housing Wire, was publicly pushing for higher mortgage rates heading into 2022, something I think Logan will regret and later retract, his view being that the savagely unhealthy housing market needed to be cooled in order for inventory to rise. The historically low levels of inventory reached during the pandemic gave homebuyers little choice but to bid up prices. If we're going to return to a healthy housing market, he predicts, we need to see national inventory rise to a range between 1.52 million and 1.93 million units. The National Association of Realtors' latest reading has inventory at just 1.03 million units. And his concern is the future is if rates fall again, as some inventory gains we had will go away. And that's always the case. People just believe there's this linear path between rates and housing prices and demand. But that's not true because during the great financial crisis, what happened to rates? They fell. What happened to home prices? They fell. See, it's all because a function of market liquidity. And when you take out all the fiscal stimulus which certainly was a boom to the housing market and now you take out the fed who is going to hike next week by 50 basis points and quantitative tightening is going to start well what you're going to see is liquidity in the economy is going to go away and you can see rates fall and even if rates fall people still will not be able to afford homes and that still could cause housing prices to crash even if rates go down the U.S. for sale homes rise in the first since 2019, according to Realtor.com. Another headline suggesting the prices are heading lower as the number of active listings rose 8% year over year in May, probably driven by new sellers. Well, that's usually where new listings come from. And a slowdown in would-be buyers deterred by high prices, according to Realtor.com. The largest increase in new listings were in the West and the South in cities including Austin, Texas, Phoenix. And still, the uptick in inventory doesn't necessarily mean that the housing market exuberance is softening. Listings remain 48.5% below their May 2020 level, and price increases have accelerated in recent months. So when you start to see new listings, what does it mean? Well, it obviously means there's some people that are looking and saying, hey, I'm going to ring the bell on this top, and I'm going to get out. And they think that perhaps the market here has peaked, and they're looking for to maybe sell that second home or another home or just get out of the home they're in. It also could be 
a sign of financial stress, households saying, hey, look, we can't afford to keep the house we're in due to inflation, but there's a lot of equity in there. Let's sell this thing, potentially move somewhere else, downsize. We can get by on the equity for a while if we have to change jobs. But that is another factor because people have been buying bigger and bigger homes, and that's come with bigger and bigger bills. Let's keep going. Because the case Shiller home prices soared by record in March, indicating again why people may be selling, trying to get out at the top, with home sales slumping across the nation and signaling high end homes dominating the sale. This morning's case Shiller home price index exploded higher, with the latest data from March showing the 20 city composite surging 2.42% month over month and surging by a record 21.2% year over year. And you can see off the charts. And again, you know, you start to think about people's wealth the fact they see the market come down they may have you know flashbacks to the great financial crisis and realize hey if the market tanks my home equity has gone with it i'm at least going to cash out on one of those and maybe put it back to work some other way and another indication that house prices are coming down, something we look at every week is the mortgage market. We see demand for lending falling here in blue. You can see the they've got on this chart, the 30 year fixed mortgage rate shown inverted. It's a leading indicator. And here is the S&P CoreLogic case or 20 city composite home price index in green, indicating that it is a lagged indicator that is indeed heading lower. And if you're at all concerned when another housing bus could mean to your portfolio well you shouldn't be i'll put a link up here to portfolio shield in the corner and the description below give a look when you've got a chance all right let's take a look now because there's more signs that the housing market is about to go bust as we see that lumber prices get chopped in half amid chill in housing markets as futures sink as soaring prices make homes less affordable and potential home buyers are now having second thoughts the commodities collapse is a stark reversal from all-time highs since during 2021 during a pandemic fueled home building boom the u.s home prices are up 42 percent since the start of the pandemic and of course experts now saying they can't go down but they're going to, which coupled with a rate hike is making housing unaffordable, according to recent mortgage data from Black Knight. And now we're also seeing parents jump into the fray as they're buying homes for their kids that are priced out of the housing market. Now I want you to be thinking that when a parent comes in with a down payment or financial support, that is spending that they might have done elsewhere that's now going into the peak of the housing market that's going to get tied up as prices go down and that is going to delay future spending for that parent who now is going to see that they might not be getting their money back from their kid if their late plan was to either refi the property later as it went up in value or to sell it later they're going to see their money tied up that's also going to be a drag on future spending as high property prices and mortgage rates mean new home buyers are relying more on assistance than ever before as parents increasingly help their adult children purchase homes, well, that means co-signing a mortgage, giving money for a down payment, or buying the property outright. A New York Oval Bankers real estate agent said she has never seen so many parents buying homes for or with their kids in her 15 years at her broker. In January, she's worked with four parent-child combo clients, three who whom all paying cash. Now think about this is when those parents need cash, where are they gonna turn to? Well, that's right, they're gonna turn to the stock market that's heading lower and that will help drive markets down even more as people have eventually need money when the housing market goes down with it. And we're also seeing the high end of the market go too. As even deep pocketed buyers are starting to back away from the US housing market, as real estate agents in places like New York, Los Angeles, and Hamptons say frenzy deal making and record setting prices that characterize the past few years have eased thanks to a growing disconnect between what sellers want and what buyers are willing to pay. And again, this is that wealth of fact. If the stock market was continuing to run up at 30% annualized, well, then these buyers would have no problem. But they're seeing the market go the other direction, and now they're starting to balk at higher prices. Meanwhile, buyers are grappling with inflation, this year's interest rate hike, and the volatile stock market. Gas prices, the war in Ukraine are adding to feelings of economic uncertainty, effectively throwing cold water on luxury sales, but it's really a story of the equity markets. The number of luxury homes, as defined as the top 5% of the market that sold during a three-month period between February 1st to April 30th, dropped a whopping 18% compared to the number of sales during the same period in 2021. That's the biggest decline since the pandemic started. 
And so again, we see more and more signs. And you notice, that's why I wanted to show you that chart early on in today's show about how the housing market is connected to the stock market because the entire US economy is a function of the equity markets. They go lower, everything goes with them, particularly when the Fed is in the early stages of an aggressive tightening cycle that we haven't seen since the 1970s. And mortgage applications crashed to their 22-year low as monthly payments demand rocket higher in a sign that there's demand is waning because if you're not if you're buying a house, you might need a mortgage. And this is saying the demand is in the toilet as another week, another collapse in pace of mortgage applications as the Mortgage Bankers Association reports a six and a half percent week over week drop in applications. The fourth straight weekly drop to its lowest now since 2000 purchases following more than refis tumbling 6.1 percent. Of course, you have purchase applications falling. What does that tell you is that new home sales are going away. And that is a big problem because what did builders do? Well, they started building building on spec, build it and they will come. And we're starting to see again, more and more signs of an inventory recession coming on top of the Fed withdrawing liquidity. And all this points to one thing, and that is housing affordability is cratering. And now by 29% over the last year, with this fastest crash on record, Last year, no surprise, as we see here, the relative affordability in new homes in the U.S. is tumbling down as the median household income only covered 17.4% of the new median new home price sale in April 2022, the lowest on record. So as buyers now see more and more of their income going to, to purchase a home, maintain a home, utilities for a home, expenses for a home, it means less spending in other parts of the economy. But the big driver here is the equity markets pointing that real estate markets are not going to stay up, that likely price are gonna, prices are going to come down and quite significantly. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for being fans. Thanks for watching. Bye now.